Entertainment Extra continues with movie critic Richard Krause on News Talk 1010. I know we're all exhausted, but we gotta push just a little bit more. We have to go in there, hand to hand. Do whatever you gotta do to keep this group safe. Hey, movie lovers and citizens of Earth, welcome to a little extra entertainment extra. Now, if you've been watching television at all on Sunday nights, or really, if you've been paying attention to television at all this year, you must have heard about The Walking Dead. We've just heard a little snippet from The Walking Dead, and it is my pleasure to have in studio the showrunner and writer of season three, Glenn Mazzara. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. You're here in Toronto because today you'll be uh, teaching something called The Odyssey of Writing with Glenn Mazzara at the Toronto Screenwriting Conference. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, you know, when I look back at my career and and uh, all that it's taken to become a writer, it, it's it's been a hell of a journey. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really been an interesting thing. And, and I was thinking about metaphors as I'm kind of in this transitional space right now. And I was thinking about the Odyssey and Odysseus and how long it took him to get home. And I actually think a lot about him uh, when I'm writing, believe it or not. So, uh, you know, that's that's a, a story that everyone knows. That's a story that was originally told verbally and then eventually written down. And and I go back to it for inspiration. So I sort of want to talk about that story and then give some personal experiences for my own career and hopefully That'll uh, mean something to some of the aspiring screenwriters at the conference. Well, it's interesting because you will be speaking with aspiring screenwriters. So some of them probably have day jobs still and, you know, working in restaurants, doing whatever it is that they do during the day. And then they're writing at night. I know I did that for a long time mm -hmm. before my first book came out. You worked as a hospital administrator. That's right. Uh, in New York. And then as the story goes, and uh, this is what I want to get from you, kind of gave it all up and said, you know what, enough of this, I'm going to move to L.A. And, and try my luck out there. Seems like a huge step. Well, I wasn't really that good a hospital administrator. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, it, you know, I, I was one of those people writing in coffee shops yep. and going into work. I didn't have a laptop at the time, so I was going in and using the hospital computers, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, to work on screenplays and all. And then I had a couple, I had some luck. I had a few people who were interested in, in meeting with me and reading with me, and, and the ball started rolling. And, and you know, I was pursuing my dream. Right. So at what point do you say, oh, that's far enough. I'm not going to pursue my dream. Once it starts opening and you feel, yeah, I want to do this. I love this. I'm going to take a chance. And, and listen, my wife was incredibly supportive and we moved out. We had a small child. So it was a big sacrifice, okay. particularly for her, because at least I was working. She was, mm, I hope this guy knows what he's doing. Mm hmm and you're, you know, you sound like a, a born and bred New Yorker. So I am. moving to the coast is a, is a big York. step as well. It, it terrified my father. You know, yeah. my father worked in a hospital for 47 years. So the idea that I would pick up, move across the country to an industry where I knew no one, and then really change jobs mm -hmm. every year and a half, two years to go to a different show. You never know if a show is going to be canceled or not. He still thinks I'm nuts. Well, I'll tell you, you know, uh, if my dad, who is 85, is any indication, he still doesn't understand exactly what I do for a living. <laughs> right, right. Even though there's nine books out in the radio, he sees me on TV and stuff, he still doesn't quite get it because I don't go somewhere at 9 o'clock every day and, you know, punch a clock. Yeah, there's not a clean path. Yeah. And getting back to the Odyssey, that's my point. And I think that when we go into making TV when if you think about TV production mm -hmm. it's a it's a manufacturing term you know it's supposed to be that we're clerks and we're nice neat writers and we hit the desk every every morning at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. and start writing and and it's not that easy Cre uh, the creative process is messy and and it takes you down a lot of odd paths and somehow it all comes together and you can draw upon all your experiences when you're writing and I think people think it's supposed to be one thing, but my experience is that it's very different. Yeah, yeah. I don't think people really understand, unless you've written, unless you've done it, what the process is. And, and I often get new writers coming to me and saying, you know, what do you think I should do? How do you think? And I, I say, I don't know what you should do because it took me years to figure out my process. It took me years to figure out how to uh, get the words from my you know, brain onto the page. And, you know, whatever it is, and inspiration still strikes at weird times. It's and, and, and it's not like any other job. True. Uh, you know, I, I was working on one show, 
And we had a script coordinator, a woman who published the scripts, kept track of all the proofreading, that stuff. And she was baffled by my process because she said, there is no process. You know, it's like in Apocalypse Now. Do you find my methods yeah. mad? I don't find any method here at all, sir. It's like that, you know, and, and I've been accused of becoming Kurtz and going up the river and, and all of that. But, hey, it, it works for me. Well, it's, it, it certainly worked in the uh, last season of The Walking Dead. Thank I you. have to tell you, this uh, it was, and I've said this on this show a lot of times, and I've said it in you know, all over the place. There were episodes of the third season that were the best thing not only on television that week but that year. Well, oh, thank that you. That's very and nice. There was stuff that happened in that in that uh, season, and it was a brave season. You killed off characters that people had grown to love. Mm-hmm. You uh, took the show in a in a much different direction than it had been. Um, was there <laughs> uh, was that all part of a plan? How what's that process like? Do, at the very beginning of this, do you know where it's going to go, and then uh, you have to sort of. I don't know, adapt as the audience says, ooh, we really like the governor. So you think, now we got to keep him around. Or how does it work? We bring the writers together uh, early on. Before, before that, I had written a long document on what the show felt like, right. just, just what my inspiration was for the season, uh, what I wanted some themes to be. And then you bring writers together and everybody kind of adds. So, so as we start writing, we present that to the other producers, the network, and then you get into the scripts. So by the time the show is airing and we're getting audience feedback, most of it's in the can. So we are not making adjustments based on audience response. Right. We're not doing that. But so it's really my job to kind of guide us. And, and I really always felt this show is a horror show mm-hmm. that I need to push the horror that we see in horror movies pushed out why is it scary and and that's why i think people are on the edge of the seat because we're also kind of doing a classic horror more like the 70s films than a lot of the sadistic horror you see today Mm -hmm. that's not something i'm interested in so that's that's been something that i've really that i that's been i think what i've added to the show to really really push that element and and some of that means that you know death is is always present Mm -hmm. death hits you when you don't expect that's something I, I took seriously. My guest in studio is Glenn Mazzara. He was the showrunner of the last season of the best show on television, The Walking Dead. And uh, when we come back, we're going to continue talking about The Walking Dead a little bit. I think one of the brilliant things about that show is that it makes you care about the characters, the human characters, uh, so much that when they go, it can be very devastating. So we'll talk about that a little bit. And we'll also talk a little bit about Roger Ebert, who passed away this week at age 70. It's Extra Entertainment from Entertainment Extra with Richard Krause on In-Depth Radio, News Talk 1010. You go on giving that girl. He ain't going to kill her, you know. He's just going to do things to her. You'd let that happen for a shot. You're cold as ice, Officer Friendly. Wow, that's uh, from the. I got a little goosebumps listening to that. It's from The Walking Dead. My guest in studio is Glenn Mazzara. He was the showrunner and uh, writer of The Walking Dead third season. And man, I'll tell you, uh, I was glued to the TV every Sunday night. Uh, watching this, couldn't wait for it to happen. And then it's one of those things where uh, I would then watch it again and sort of go back because the, the show was kind of rich uh, visually, but also emotionally rich as well. And, you know, you had characters like uh, Merle who, over the course of this season, went from being this awful redneck man who you wouldn't want to be in the same room to uh, to redeeming himself in a way that I would not have expected before meeting a kind of gruesome end. Daryl became his brother, became a sex symbol. A lot of stuff happened. Did you see the the, the cult of Daryl coming? Because when he first uh, started on the show, you would not have expected that women were going to if go on Twitter. Go on Twitter and see what people say about him, and it's quite something. It's fantastic. You you know, uh, Norman Reedus is, yeah. is really just a, a great guy and a friend and, and just uh, just I love working with him. And when I first took over the show in season two, that storyline led me to drop him out of a few episodes. And then at the same time that we were promoting the beginning of the second season and he, he has a large part. Mm-hmm. He's just more of the uh, more of the fabric of the show. Right. 
So I really missed him in the episodes, and I realized that I had made a mistake in a couple of episodes by dropping him out. So then coming into this season, he's just there. He's Rick's number two. He, uh, you know, he's on screen a lot, and, and I think it's just he's a valuable presence because when he's there, you know it's going to be cool, but you're still going to be okay. He, yeah. he keeps yeah. the audience safe, uh, which is interesting. Well, I thought it was interesting to take a character like him and sort of flip him around as well. I mean, he, he uh, showed an unusually kind-hearted side that I would not have expected earlier on. I think that's maybe going to change in the next season, but who knows, uh, after events, of uh, recent events in the mm-hmm. show. But certainly that character changed a great deal. And I, it, was, it was lovely to see characters on a television show like this ha- have real arcs. Well, that's something that we try to do. We mm-hmm. want to show how people change. You know, we want to show the effects of trauma, the effects of violence, of death, uh, grief, how people make decisions, and, and how people maybe assume they have one role and then start to develop another. You know, a character like Daryl, in a sense, is pre-adapted to this mm-hmm. apocalypse. You know, he's, he's kind of in the zone now. That's a guy who was probably a loser before the zombie showed up, and now he's, he's someone that we all need. So the, all of this goes into developing these characters, and we've been blessed with a really great cast that bring these people to life. You can't imagine anyone else playing those characters. No, absolutely not. Um, speaking with Glenn Mazzara, showrunner and writer of the third season of The Walking Dead, you're not coming back for the next season, but you've just signed a big deal with Fox, so <laughs> yahoo, congratulations. Well, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to uh, creating some new shows. Yeah, so it, it, that's it. You're, now, can you give us a hint as to what kind of thing, or do we just have to wait by our television's uh, remotes in hand? It's premature to say, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I'm interested in, in uh, you know, sticking with some z- genre shows, right. you know, maybe uh, some try my hand at science fiction now, but but there's, there's, you know, some other material that I'm really interested in. So uh, I'm looking forward to creating my own worlds, my own characters, and, and bringing in people that I've worked with in the past and just kind of um, um, doing it now for, for my own vision. So well, I'm excited. I'll be in front of the television watching for sure. We'll come back uh, in just a moment or two speaking with Glenn Mazzara. And we're going to talk about Roger Ebert. Stay with us. You're not prisoners here. You're guests. Welcome to Woodbury. Hard to believe you ladies lasted so long out there. I don't trust him. You're listening to Entertainment Extra. Now more with movie critic Richard Krause on In-Depth Radio, News Talk 1010. You've just been listening to a little taste of The Walking Dead. My guest in studio, Glenn Mazzara, he was the showrunner and writer of the third season. And uh, wow, I mean, we'll move on from The Walking Dead right now, but I, I, I'll tell you again. Some of the best hours of television that I saw, not only the weeks that they were on, but the last year and into this year, uh, were spent on Sunday nights watching that show. So congratulations. Well, thank you. Uh, Roger, Eager, uh, Roger Ebert passed away uh, this week at age 70. Uh, I wanted to, to ask you um, just what sort of impact as a creative person, as a person who works in that industry, uh, if any, he had on you? Well, you know, I've been thinking about this. And. You know, I think Roger Ebert was a critic who took the audience seriously Mm -hmm. and really made it okay to have an opinion. If you think about it now, everybody has an opinion about movies. But, you know, he was certainly a a film critic of great stature and, Mm -hmm. and intellect. But it really comes down to, yeah, go check it out. Go see the movie. Thumbs up, thumbs down. That's how friends talk to their neighbors and their family members about movie. You know, he understood the language of the audience, how mm-hmm. we talk about movies. And, and he made that accessible and kind of brought you into that process. And if you think about the fact that, you know, people tweet their responses or they have YouTube channels where they're just reviewing movies themselves – um, I think he's been the inspiration for that, and it's it's uh, quite a legacy. Well, I'll tell you, I've been uh, saying about him that he took film criticism from the pages of The New Yorker, Pauline Kael, a mm-hmm. genius, no doubt, but would write three, 4,000-word articles about movies and moved it into uh, our homes. Right. And, yeah, in a much different way. He was a Midwestern guy who people trusted, and he knew how to speak to people, and mm-hmm. that's, you know, that, that was his legacy. Now, let's speak a little bit in the closing minutes of the show— um, Walking Dead, great deal written about that. Some good, some bad, I'm sure. I didn't see any bad reviews. I'm sure there were. What does criticism, what effect does it have on you? You know, it's interesting because, again, all of this criticism is after 
everything's been shot Mm -hmm. and aired. So, um, you know, it's funny because there is a a tremendous amount of of, uh, good press about the show. Mm -hmm. And I just blow right past that. I only read the negative stuff, and and I beat myself up, and I take this stuff seriously, and I want to. I used to want to engage in debates with people, and right. and then I just realized, you know, people are talking about the show, people mm-hmm. are excited about the show, people have their opinions, and and that's okay, that's good, and and I want to create work that people have strong opinions about, and here they are. And so uh, it's it, I've been getting better at trying to tune it out because it is just chatter mm-hmm. in the sense that you have to put it all aside when you sit down with the blank page. When you start writing, you can't think about is so-and-so going to like this or not or whatever. You just try to tell the best story you can, and you have to focus on being true to that story. So the criticism is hard to tune out, and I don't know if I can ever not listen to it, but it's funny how I only take the negative stuff seriously. Glenn Mazzara has been my guest in studio. He'll be in town at the Toronto Screenwriting Conference tonight. Uh, He's teaching a class called The Odyssey of Writing with Glenn Mazzara. I know it'll be fascinating. Glenn, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. And thank you for listening to a little extra Entertainment Extra. Be sure to join us next week. We have another really special guest coming in, the director of Bubba Hotep, the Phantasm movies, and lots of other stuff, including a movie that's just now on DVD called John Dies at the End. It'll blow your mind. Check it out. His name is Don Coscarelli, and he joins me for a half an hour next week. (laughs) 